actually the end after all these, <laughs> like, believe it or not, like, you're yeah. actually going to be done with college football after this. Yeah, it's a little, uh, it's a weird feeling right now, just trying to focus on the game and make it like any other game, but, you know, in the back of my head, I know this is going to be my, my last time wearing the Oregon jersey, so I'm, it's, a, it's a bittersweet moment, but just hoping to end on a good note. At the same time, given the bowl experience the last couple of years, yeah. this is actually maybe the first mobile one for you like yeah. in a starting capacity yeah. since the Rose Bowl? Yeah, no, relatively. I think, uh, you know, I haven't, I haven't won a bowl game yet as a starter, and there's been some unique circumstances, but I'm really excited for this one to, you know, just go out there and give it our, give it our best shot and put our best foot forward and hopefully, you know, come back with a win. What were the emotions like after the, the end of the regular season with that loss to Oregon State? And how excited are you to be able to get on the field again and try and get some of that back? Yeah, you know, just had a, you know, just had a really bad taste in our mouth after that game and you know, after the UW game too. So you never like to lose games, but especially rivalry games. And being a hometown kid, you know, I know how important that that rivalry is to the state and both universities. So I think for me, I, I took that one pretty hard. But just trying to get that bad taste out of our mouth and you know end the end the season on a good note for sure. What is one advantage to having a little bit more time okay. to prepare for this bowl game, and what might also be a disadvantage with the amount of time? I think advantage is getting guys healthy. Um, you know, we had a lot of guys playing through various different injuries and playing playing hurt the, the whole year. So just getting those guys healthy and getting them back for the bowl game. I think disadvantage is sometimes you can start preparing too early for a bowl game, and then you kind of get burnt out on the film. But I think we've done it pretty good where, you know, we're starting to really get into our, our game planning. Speaking of which, I don't think we've talked to you since. What was going on in the Washington game? Clearly, your your arm, shoulder area yeah. is very much uh, yeah. problematic. Yeah, I was in a, I was in a good deal of pain. That was uh, that was tough, and ended up you know having to kind of play. It started during the Cal week, and then you know kind of progressed, and uh, thought I'd kind of get by without saying much, and then had to go to the trainer. I was like, yeah, something just doesn't feel right. So ended up resting it up these these past two weeks. Um, you know, it's feeling really good right now, but. You know that, that game was tough just because I couldn't I couldn't really move my arm by the by the end of the second to last drive. It's, that was that was tough. Um, but you know, trainers, chief, they, Rachel, they all they all got me right for, and I know I'm gonna be good for the regular season. Obviously, Kenny gone. You got Will coming in. You got kind of transition period with Drew and Junior calling yeah. the offense. What's that transition been like for you guys these past couple weeks? Yeah, it's kind of been a seamless transition. You know, it was weird to have Coach Dillingham gone. Um, just because he's a you know unique personality, he's always you know cracking jokes and stuff when we were walking in the meeting room. Um, but you know we have you know Coach Adams and Coach Marins are you know great people and great coaches. So it's been a, it's been a nice transition. We've kind of gotten used to it now, um, and I'm really excited to you know see what they got for us. In bowl, game. bowl games are always sometimes a sense of who wants to be here more than, yeah. than the opponent. What do you yeah. get from from your feeling of just your team and just the desire of finishing strong, like you said? Yeah, I think, you know, like I said, we, you know, us in North Carolina had kind of similar ends of the season, if you really look at it, and, you know, both lost to rivals to, to end the year. Um, and I think, you know, we both are going to have a bad taste in our mouth and looking to, you know, get that, get that, uh, get that bad taste out of the program and just focus on a, uh, you know, successful, tw this, this win will lead over into 2023 for whoever, whoever wins this game. So, uh, you know, I think the guys want to be here. You know, a lot of guys who didn't want to be here transferred or are leaving. So, um, you know, I respect whatever whatever decision they make. But I think we got we got guys here that, that want to be here. I remember last year around this time, you were talking about your return to come back for an extra yeah. year, and you didn't want to leave the program in the state that it was. Yeah. Looking back, just the totality of this whole season. Yes. Yeah. How do you feel like the, the program is now? You know, after a full season. Of no, I think uh, you know we, every every year gonna have your ups and downs, and that's that's with every team. Um, I think we've definitely had our fair share of ups and downs, especially you know didn't didn't end the year how we how we wanted to, and that was one of my goals this year was you know beat beat our rivals, um, and didn't end up you know completing that. But I think you can you can look at the games that we played in that were you know big games like BYU, um, UCLA, some games like that. Uh, you know, we went on the road and, you know, we beat some teams pretty good. And, uh, so I think I think there's some stuff that you can look at. I'm like, wow, I'm really proud of that. And other stuff, I'm like, hey, you know, we need to improve on that. Uh, or the, I guess they now because I'm not going to be a part of it. Um, <laughs> but they need to improve upon that, you know, next year and years coming forward. And I know Coach Lanning will do a great job with, with all these guys. You feel like the, the long-term prospectus of the program is better than it was a year ago this time? Yeah, tremendous. Yeah, it's night and day, I think, just in terms of bringing Coach Lanning in here. Um, you know, we had guys leave the program and still had guys leave the program. He's bringing, you know, guys in and 
uh, I think once you know he gets his his own recruits and stuff like that in the next few years are going to be you know, pretty pretty dangerous in this and this next year too. What about the offensive line in particular? You know what's going to be coming back next year because you guys won't be losing a lot. How do you feel about the guys that we taking over that starting role next year? Yeah, I think they're in great hands. Uh, you know, I think we've been preparing these guys for the past two years, some of them three years, um, just to be be ready to be starters. Because at some point, you know, they, their numbers were called this year when some guys went down and they stepped up, and then uh, some guys they knew that their their time was coming and they just kind of had to, you know, keep on working and not I don't want to say wait it out, but you know, continue to to grind every single day in practice and know that their uh, their time was coming. So I, it's they're they're going to get tapped on their shoulder during spring ball and you know see if they can. You know, handle all the pressures that, that comes with playing offensive line and being a you know a starter in a, in a Pac-12 school. I know you and Jackson have a pretty close relationship. Yeah. What's it been like just watching him kind of? I mean, for one, have a really good season, but also just progress. Yeah, he's uh, he's really progressed, and uh, you know I'm, I couldn't be more proud of him. Just how much he's grown, yeah. maturity-wise, you know, from this year or from last year to this year. Uh, I think especially through know, the mental side of the game and him really improving in the film room, uh, asking me questions, you know, about. Just ran it like safety rotation, you know, blitz looks from linebackers when they tighten down in the O'Shea's and stuff like that. And he's really become a student. Of, he's becoming a student of the game. It's, I think that's critically important to playing offensive line, especially play center. So I'm excited to watch him next year. He's good. For North Carolina specifically, Alex, what do you see from from Cedric Ray and that he's a guy who seems to find the ball in a lot of different areas? Just what, what makes him such a playmaker for them? He's just got a knack for the ball. I think like he's uh, he's just one of those guys that you you watch. And, you know, he's just a he's just a ball player. So I think uh, they have a lot of those guys on their team. Uh, you look at their front seven. I mean, I've watched a little bit of the back end. I know they've had some guys transfer, but you know their front seven is really talented. Uh, they're a really deep front seven because they've lost a few guys to transfer and they've lost a few guys to injury. But you know they still every single game. I watched the most recent game. Uh, they still had quite a few guys that went in there and performed at a high level. So. Uh, it'll be a really, really great challenge for us, and then these will probably be two of the better, I'd say probably the best linebacker duo we've played in my opinion. So far this year. A lot of times when players have aspirations of going on to the next level, they consider, you know, opting out of the bowl game and focusing on the NFL combine. Was that ever a, an option for you? No, I never thought about it. I mean, I signed a NLI, NLI or National Letter of Intent to, to play here. Cam McCormick, so I'm say. Continue to. You know, uh, exhaust my eligibility until I'm done. So I, I'm going to finish what I started. That's that's always been uh, some other but Not to get too far ahead of things, but what, what yeah. does life look for you after December 28th? Do you know where you're going to be based for kind of draft prep stuff? Yeah, I'm going to be down in Arizona with uh, Shane Lemieux and Jake Hansen, where those guys train, and TJ's coming with me too. So it'll be a good, good group of guys, all offensive linemen at this training facility. So it'll be, it'll be pretty cool, good learning experience. I know you leaned on those guys when they were in the program to help you, you know, get ready for this role. Just how much is the brotherhood uh, along the offensive line can help you, you know, train for the draft? Because there's a lot of guys that have come through this program that are yeah. in the league now. Yeah, I think uh, I think specifically I look at like guys like Shane and Jake. Uh, those guys have always been been there for me, you know, since they were here and you know I was a freshman here and they kind of took me under their wing. And then you know, I talk to Shane probably every day. We play video games together and you know talk ball, talk life. Um, so he's always been someone that I, I can lean on. So I think. You know, a big reason of you know me going to this place to train is because you know they they're there and they've always been mentors to me, and I know you know they wouldn't lead me down the wrong path. So I'm excited to get down and you know get back to training with them just like the old days. Thanks, Alex. Yep. Thanks, y'all. Thanks, Alex.